On this episode of Cape Media News, resilient roots in no mo may, acrobats flip at Hyannis Circus, and a legislative update from Representative Flanagan. These stories and more tonight on Cape Media News. Good evening and welcome to Cape Media News, your source for hyperlocal news that matters. I'm Lauren Williamson. The unofficial Harwich Town election results are in, and with a turnout just over 17%, Jeff Handler has won a seat on the Board of Selectmen, as well as incumbent Don Howell. Howell narrowly edged out a candidate, Pete Bukarski, by just three votes. All other races were unopposed. Three public measures were also on the ballot, the Route 28 sewer pipe, East Harwich Wastewater, Collection Expansion, and a Charter Amendment for the Select Board. All three measures passed. In Yarmouth, a Harwich man faces multiple charges after crashing his car in a reckless street racing incident. Yarmouth PD's Officer Golden observed two vehicles speeding at a staggering 109 miles per hour on Willow Street, where the speed limit is only 45. The driver, 35-year-old Anthony Fox, lost control, crossing lanes and colliding with a raised median. Anthony has been charged accordingly, but authorities are seeking information about the second vehicle involved and urge anyone with details to contact Officer Golden at 508-775-0445. Last year, the Housing Assistance Corporation supported over 6,200 clients through services including education, stabilization, and homeless prevention. Their crucial efforts will be on display this Sunday, May 21st, at the annual Walk for Hope, a charity walk striving to connect fellow citizens to safe, stable housing, fostering healthy families and thriving communities across the Cape and Islands. This lively event will kick off at 12 p.m. with a family-friendly activities and live music. The walk will commence at 1 p.m., followed by further festivities including yard games, food, and giveaways. The community is warmly invited to join Peace of Mind, this Sunday contributing to a cause that seeks to ensure every individual has a home. For more information and locations, visit their website at hacwalkforhope.org. The Sharing Kindness Organization is hosting their signature fundraiser, the Cape and Islands Suicide Awareness Walk, this Saturday, May 20th in Hyannis. This annual gathering serves as a beacon of hope, healing, and connection for many in the community. Participants come together not just to remember those tragically lost to suicide, but also to stand in solidarity with survivors and to shine a light on the often stigmatized issues of mental health and suicide. The funds raised from this event allow Share Kindness to continue their important work right here on Cape and Islands. They offer free suicide prevention services, grief support, and much needed mental health education programs. Whether you've experienced a loss, struggle with mental health, or simply want to show your support, you are invited to walk alongside your neighbors in the powerful display of unity and resilience. It's more than just a walk, and it's a day for sharing stories, spreading awareness, and quite literally, sharing kindness. For more information or to donate, please visit sharingkindness.org. The Cape Cod Women's Business Summit was going to take place this week on May 16th, with this year's theme being Power Moves for Powerful Women. It would have featured educational speakers and networking opportunities, but the event was suddenly postponed until 2024. The event sought to promote and empower women in all areas of business, but will have to wait until the event makes its way to Cape Cod in the future. An official statement from their website, they stated, We look forward to bringing the women of Cape Cod together for the second powerful edition of Cape Cod Women's Business Summit next spring. Although their social media pages have been deactivated following the postponement, you may still subscribe to their e-newsletter at the bottom of their website's main page for more information on next year's event. Woods Hole Group would like to hear about your experiences, concerns, and views regarding how the town of Yarmouth prioritizes actions to become more resilient to coastal hazards. They will be holding a public meeting on Wednesday, May 24th at 6 p.m. to overview the Yarmouth Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment and Adaptation Plan. Residents are encouraged to attend in person in the hearing room at Town Hall or virtually via Yarmouth's Channel 18. 
to learn how the town of Yarmouth is evaluating the impacts of sea level rise and storm surge on town infrastructure and other important assets vital to the successful operation of the town and town services. For more information, you can contact Amanda Lima at alima at yarmouth.ma.us. A young local entrepreneur has set a major milestone in the realm of confectionery delights. Seven-year-old DY Girl Scout Emma from Yarmouth Troop 64895 has sold her way to the top, achieving the highest honor in the Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts Council as the top Girl Scout seller. This year, the iconic Girl Scout cookie program saw the participation of over 14,000 ambitious Girl Scouts across eastern Massachusetts. These young go-getters collectively sold an astonishing 2.2 million packages of Girl Scout cookies. The spirit of competition was also quite evident as over 700 Scouts each sold more than 500 packages of these sweet delights. And a special shout out goes to the DY Girl Scouts, who had 18 girls, each exceeding the 500 mark this year. So to Emma and all of the Girl Scouts who have proven their mettle in this iconic program, we salute you, your entrepreneurship, your perseverance, and most importantly, your ability to make the world a little bit sweeter, one cookie at a time. Coming up after the break, high flying acrobatics and more, stay tuned. This week, content producer Christian Garnett spoke with Mark Nelson from Resilient Roots. They spoke about the Cape's second annual No Mow May. It's an initiative which encourages residents not to mow their lawns in the month of May in an effort to promote a healthy Cape ecosystem. Take a look. In a bid to protect the environment and promote pollinator health, a local nonprofit organization on Cape Cod is calling on residents to embrace No Mow May. The initiative encourages letting lawns grow naturally throughout the month of May, allowing flowers like clovers and violets to bloom. It's just asking people to let their lawns grow naturally for the month of May. And what that does is it allows the flowers in the grass of the clover and the violets and other species in your lawn to bloom a little bit. Mark Nelson, a passionate advocate for ecological landscaping, explains the importance of no mow May for pollinators. And that provides important food as the pollinator species are waking up in the spring and gives them a chance to thrive and to be healthy and, and move forward into the summer as well. The simplicity of this initiative is a key aspect. And it's very simple because we're not asking you to do something. We're asking you to take a break from your lawnmower. Let the lawn grow. Very simple. And it's, you know, with a warm day like today, I don't have to go out and mow the lawn. So there's something good there. Nelson shared his personal experience participating in No Mow May. We noticed a lot of beneficial things came from letting that lawn grow. Uh, for starters, we saw a lot of the, the pollinators and the insects that thrive on that habitat. Nelson also emphasizes the importance of mulching trimmed grass to support the natural overall ecosystem. As the summer went along, we did mow the lawn but we mulched everything that had come up. So we're not taking it away from the lawn. We're using it to feed the soil and promote the health of the grasses and the clover and other things in the lawn. Joining the movement is as simple as letting your lawn flourish. To participate in No Mow May and learn more about Resilient Roots initiatives, visit their website and embrace ecological landscaping practices. By allowing lawns to flourish, we can foster healthier ecosystems and support the well-being of pollinators. There are so many challenges we have with environmental issues here in Cape Cod. This is a simple way to improve some of them and protect our pollinators, improve our, the habitat in our lawns, and help protect our water quality as well. For Cape Media News, I'm Christian Garnett. Flip Circus graced the town of Hyannis this month, bringing with it a magical experience that delighted audience from all walks of life. Here's Ryan Thompson with more. This month, the Flip Circus arrived in Hyannis, Cape Cod, bringing with it a magical experience for audiences of all ages. 
Flip Circus came from the imagination of the Vasquez family, which is a circus that's very traditional, and it's mostly for the entire audience. A lot of family are going to enjoy the show. You have artists from different parts of the world. So Flip is super small, but big on the inside. Flip Circus offers a unique and intimate setting, allowing spectators to witness extraordinary acts up close. One unique thing about Flip is that you're so close to the stage, so you feel something very magical as you see the artists right up close. Flip Circus aims to provide entertainment for everyone, regardless of language or cultural background, creating a universal experience that captivates audiences from all walks of life. Flip is targeted to everybody, so everybody is going to enjoy it. It's a show that you don't need to understand, particularly English, to understand the show. So it's something that's very unique and very traditional. While the specifics of the acts are kept under wraps to preserve the element of surprise, Flip Circus promises unforgettable and mesmerizing performances that will leave spectators in awe. We are training uh, every day to keep our ass in shape because we have to go on trapeze. But on top of that, we are uh, every day we try to evolve our um, comedy. Every day is a different audience, so we need to adapt our comedy to the audience because uh, every day is different. The Flip Circus is not just a job for these performers. It's a passion. Their ultimate reward comes from seeing the smiles on the faces of the audience knowing they've created a moment of happiness. It's our job, what we're doing, but when we're on stage, we don't think it's a, we don't feel like a job, you know? We, end, uh, we are there to try to make people happy, and this is the, that's what brings us joy also to us. As the Flip Circus graced Cape Cod, residents and visitors were treated to an enchanting and unforgettable experience. With its magical acts, inclusive atmosphere, and dedication to spreading joy, the Flip Circus quickly became a beloved attraction in the local community. What you're going to expect about Flip is super magical moments inside the tent. We have shows every day, Monday to Friday, 7.30. Saturday and Sunday, we have three shows. You can go to our website at flipcircus.com to get more information. For Cape Media News, I'm Ryan Thompson. Coming up, a legislative update with State Representative Chris Flanagan. Stay tuned. State Representative Chris Flanagan stopped by the studio this week to talk with our news director, Mitch Sock, and give a legislative update for the 1st Barnstable District. Uh, as of last Friday, I came off the board. Uh, we had uh, the town of Dennis had its municipal elections. I was dual hatted um, only because I didn't want the town to have to undergo a special election to fill my select board seat. I didn't want them to have to bear the expense or the logistics of having a special election. Uh, and so I'm a state representative for the first Barnstable district, uh, which encompasses uh, the towns of Dennis. Brewster, and most of Yarmouth, with the exceptions of uh, West Yarmouth precincts five and six. Okay, and what have you been up to so far this year for the towns of Dennis and, and uh, most of Yarmouth? Yeah, absolutely, great question. Uh, so I feel like I've only been in the role for about uh, four months now, but I feel like I've um, really hit the ground running. So uh, a few things, one that comes to mind uh, most recently uh, as you may know, uh, the uh, DY school district had its ribbon cutting for the new middle school, uh, which was a fantastic event. And uh, we invited uh, myself and Senator Sear and, and Rep. Kip Diggs, invited um, the MSBA, the Mass School Building Authority director, uh, to join us after the ribbon cutting uh, to the uh, Marguerite E. Small Elementary School in Yarmouth. And we did that because that school in particular, although they provide phenomenal instruction, um, for that school in particular, it's got a diversity of needs. Uh, it's very diverse um, from a socioeconomic perspective. And, and really, the, the school itself is in deplorable shape. And so we brought uh, the MSBA director, uh, Mr. McCarthy, to tour the school um, to kind of show him why it's in such need of replacement. And it's actually taken us, uh, when I say us, I mean the school district and uh, state representatives about almost 11 years to get to this point. It's been, um, the request has been out there since 2009. As you may know, uh, several Yarmouth residents were victims of a company called Solar Wolf which was a, um, a state-run program that partnered with 
uh, the town of Yarmouth to uh, undergo what was called Solarize Yarmouth. And that company uh, took people's money and then filed for bankruptcy. So I've been working with um, the Department of Energy and Environmental Affairs to help these victims in Yarmouth actually get solar panels the way they were promised. Uh, and then a few other things. Uh, wastewater is a, a big issue, particularly in Dennis and Yarmouth. I'm very proud of the town of Yarmouth for um, you know, going for the major borrowing in, in its passage at the Yarmouth town meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, and I know that not only is it uh, gonna have long lasting impacts for the district in terms of uh, environmental protection and also uh, housing development. But in addition to that, what's gonna be critical is getting as much funding both from the federal and state levels of government. Um, and so that's really top of mind, not just for myself, but all the legislators in the Cape delegation. I serve on the Labor and Workforce Development Committee. And so we uh, really focused on funding workforce development programs, particularly because our economy, particularly through COVID and you know, now that we're kind of in a post COVID world, uh, our economy is still fragile. And so I think we're trying to be as proactive as humanly possible uh, to create and incentivize and, and help businesses, particularly small businesses with their own workforce efforts. Uh, so that, you know, if depending on what happens with the, co the economy, both at the Commonwealth level and certainly nationwide, uh, you know, we're really focused on making sure that people have jobs and access to employment and that we're a partner to small businesses. Um, another kind of off the, off the cuff question yeah. here. I noted uh, we were at the, um, the legislative breakfast last week uh, in Yarmouth at Red Jacket. Yeah. Um, it was great to see you there. <laughs> uh, one thing that I noticed that's, um, I feel like might be, I don't know if it's just the Cape or not, but like the Cape Cod delegate, even being on from different sides of the aisle seems like a really tight group. I feel like that's not common everywhere. And that's something that, that's really working in favor of the Cape and Islands. So I'm so glad that you raised this as a point in, in and for giving me the opportunity to chat about this, especially as uh, the newest addition to the Cape delegation, I have to tell you, every single one of my colleagues has been unbelievably supportive of me and you know, available if I have questions. Uh, and I, I think it's true when you know, I've heard folks say in the past, and now that I'm on the other side of it, uh, I can definitely attest that it is true that you know, for Cape Cod, there's no Republicans and, and Democrats in the delegation. It's really, you know, we belong to the Cape Party. And, and so many of our issues are similar. And I think that, you know, for us to be able to advocate for resources and to deliver them back to our region, we're able to do that in an effective way because we work together. Uh, and I wish that we could see that more nationally, right? Um, you know, but. Certainly it's very bipartisan. Uh, Steve Zaros, um, the rep from the 5th Barnstable District, uh, he you know, was right there when I actually first came into the building on, when I was sworn in. He was standing right outside and welcomed me. Uh, and then David Vieira, a state representative, I wanna say from the 3rd Barnstable District, uh, he, who, you know, both of whom are Republicans, he actually took me out to lunch after uh, swearing in day. So. Uh, I say all that to say that there's a real camaraderie and it's, and it's very real and, and certainly um, our state senator Julian Sear has been a, a great partner. We work you know, very closely together um, and then uh, Leader Peak from uh, Provincetown, uh, you know, she has been just a wealth of information and a, a great resource particularly for me on the, on the House side. So. Representative Flanagan, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Is there anything else you want to say to uh, to your constituents? Uh, well, Mitch, first of all, thank you so much uh, for having me on today. I'm a huge supporter of, of Cape Media and love the work that you all do. Uh, and, and really just a, a thank you to, um, you know, the towns of Dennis and Yarmouth and Brewster for electing me. I've 
tried to hit the ground running and have loved every moment of it and I'm really just uh, grateful to have the opportunity to serve. So thank you very much again for the opportunity, Mitch, and it's great to be here with you. Be sure to catch the full interview next week. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you have a story you'd like to see covered, send us an email at newstip at capemedia.org. Tune in next week for more hyper-local news that matters on Channel 99, Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. For Cape Media News, I'm Lauren Williamson.